Hi everybody, I'm back with another crazy quilt, um, crazy S quilt block. And today we're working on block number 13. Um, pardon me for that. Um, if you are, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you um, are new to this series, please go ahead and go back and check out the intro. I don't know what happened to the center block there. Huh, that's very strange. So, we're just going to go ahead and go with this piece, because it's here. So, here we go. I got these little tiny octagons um, from a, a swap or a distache that I bought on eBay or something like that. Not even sure, honestly. So, there's a good place to use up your, your tiny pieces by starting with a very tiny beginner that's you know, one way to do it and I am not keeping track like this one's not marked as block number 13 or anything like that like I don't it's not how I'm doing it <laughs> so let's see actually instead of that piece let's go there's my other little pieces here we go another small piece There we go. Trim off this extra because that's plenty to be another small side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and skip that side and come over here to this one because I have this little piece that will fit over here, but it's not quite long enough for over there. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize it. And let's see. Let's... I need to correct this angle a little bit. So just gonna sew just on that angle this is one of my favorite fabrics it's purple batik I guess I didn't have to correct that angle but decided to and then let's see because now I have this weird spot let me go ahead and show you one of the ways that I deal with that sometimes. So I'll just take a bigger image, like this one, and I'll just sew around that raw edge style. And I like to leave um, a decent sized gap between the stitching and the edge of the fabric. And I know that there's a million different ways to do circles and curves and there's somebody out there that's going to say I did that all wrong, but you know what? It's sewn down. This will ruffle out nicely. All of that is held down. I'm going to call it good. So, you know, don't worry about what other people say that, you know, it's supposed to, supposed to be like, you know, do your own thing. Let's see. I'm just trying to find a piece that's not... Part of something else yet. Mm -hmm. No reason to use my, my crumbed pieces yet because this is such a small edge. There we go. And see, look how little of that's actually going to show, but that's fine. That's totally fine. Let's see. Now, I don't want quite so much of this, so I'm going to just take my scissors and cut it. Make it more like a strip, like so. And see now, I can take this piece, it has a little bit of a wonky edge on that side, so I'm gonna use this edge, because that edge is a little straighter. 
you know, and I could go and trim it and I could pin and I could iron and I could do lots of things to make this more precise, but that's just not, that's not how I do these. These are my relaxing sewing where I'm not worrying about any of those things to make it right, to do it properly. None of that. That is all out the window and my only concern is, um, is it long enough? Does it go from edge to edge, you know, or am I willing to cut? Which in this case, I do not want to cut. I want it to just fit. So there's my edge that I'm trying to cover, it's this edge right here. So I need to make sure it goes all the way over to there. So it's quite a long piece actually. And so you can see how quickly you go from needing those teeny tiny pieces to needing those longer, you know, pieced pieces. And of course I could use my larger scraps too. You know, that's, that's totally an option, but I, this, this way I like because it helps, um, build up the, you know, the difference and whatnot. Um, I could trim this back. A lot of people probably would. So that way when you're doing this edge, you're not sewing through that, but I am not going to worry about it in this situation. Um, just cause I really don't care to have that fabric, you know, to save that little bit of fabric. And this is just that tiny bit short. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure that the piece that goes here overlaps that. See, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick out those, you know, handful of stitches that are right there and trim this back because this fabric is so much lighter that this would show through. And honestly, because I really like this fabric, this purple fabric that I'm trimming off, and that looks really, that's a really good junk journal piece. So, there's that piece. And then now I'm gonna take this guy, this is the right side down, and I gotta make sure that I cover that. So I gotta go, nope, that's too short. There we go, I'll do it like so. And so as you can see, like there's no right or wrong here. Like I'm not following sewing rules per se. This is just, you know, how I'm doing it and it will be totally wrong as far as some people are concerned and that's okay too you know that is I'm totally okay with being wrong in some people's eyes let's see I don't want to let's see I need to find something wrong there we go. Here's a long piece. I need to cover that. I don't want to cover up too much of that. Hmm. If I just follow that edge, I end up covering up most of that other piece, but that's okay. It's not one of my favorite fabrics, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And see, you get to decide, you know, and, and it really is just something that you just, you learn to figure out as you do it. There's nobody, I mean, you can watch me do this and you can watch a million other videos, but until you actually get in there and start um, sewing the fabric together and seeing how the angles work and, and all of that, you're not really going to understand. You're not, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and leave that under. Let's see, that brought this down to this tiny bitty tiny piece, but I like that. I think that looks cool in its own way, this little tiny piece of gray here, you know. Those smaller pieces add, add something as well, you know. 
Not that the big pieces are bad, just, you know, adding a small piece every now and then does help. Let's see. There's a good strip. Is that the angle I'm going to follow? Yep. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And see, I'm repeating quite a bit of fabrics here because I had quite a bit of the same type of fabric in my small pieces. So they're just going to end up being repeated. Um, sometimes I avoid that, you know, or sometimes you can avoid that, sometimes you can't. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and snip off this extra. Give me some good... Um, junk journal fodder. And get rid of this stringy. Stringies are just a part of the process. You know. Let's see. Now I have this straight edge, but kind of. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and add that guy on here. Like so. My husband's going to be getting home any minute, so I may have to pause the video as he comes in the door. I'm hoping to get this done real quick before he makes it home. <laughs> you know? So, let's see. Those are my angly bits. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and add, just to kind of, you know, break up all of those little pieces, give your eye some place to rest. I'm gonna go ahead and add this big piece. Right along here, and that should actually finish out um, so part of this edge. Should go all the way to the edge in some part of it. I like working with the stripey fabrics because you don't have to, um, if you always cut them, you know, with the stripes, you know you're getting straightish edges. Okay, and you look, I accidentally just snipped that just a little bit, so I'll need to make sure to cover that, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Sorry, I keep hitting the timer, so I'll set it over there. I don't have it going. It just makes noise when you um, bump it. So yeah, that will actually take me almost to this corner. So I can use one of these corners as the corner. It's one of the one of the reasons why I go ahead and save these is for using on the corners like that that just didn't quite make it but that should make it all the way to the corner yeah I think it does yeah okay so and let's see we have this area here Pulled over my edge, so I have a rough estimate of where that edge is going to be, so that actually doesn't need to go out that far. So I'm actually going to just um, do the raw edge applique thing, but I am still going to use the zigzag stitch, but I'm going to narrow it. I have it quite large. Let's just take it back to the standard. That way it'll fray, but it'll, you know, keep the fraying in check. There we go. 
and that will cover up that piece that I accidentally cut and bring this all the way over to the edge. So, yeah, because see that's not sewn down, but that's fine. But yeah, see that slice is tucked in underneath there nicely. Yep, quite a bit actually. So, so I don't know if you guys could see in there, but, but yeah, see there's where I trimmed and then that's where the seam is. So that's fine. That's nice. I like how that yellow pops off of there. I'm not usually a huge yellow fan, but you know, it looks cool in this situation. Let me see. Let's grab some of our bigger pieces. Finish this one out. Let's see, where's that other edge? Because I have, I already creased the other one. And now I can see where my corner is, roughly. And see if this piece is wide enough. Overlap it. Uh, I think so. I can't take a big seam. I mean, I can take my good standard seam but can't be greedy with it and so go back to my straight stitch um i do use kind of a long straight stitch i've never had anything come unraveled because of it or anything like that other than the the crust velvets but those are just they don't do well with a straight stitch from what i can tell from the reading i've done it's just how it works so with the those velvets Oh, there we go. That corner's done. So spinning your back around here to this side. Let's see. If I use this big piece of black. Kind of, I don't know. I don't really want to use black, big piece of black on this one. Here's a long skinny strip. Well, not really super skinny, but a long strip. Going right along that teal, it's going to take that, that pink way far back, but that's okay. Because what's left, I can go ahead and use, um, I'll trim off and use in my junk journals. You know, and I have a million different ways that I use fabric in my junk journals. So, check out those videos as they come available. I have different, I'm not sure how many I have up right now. But um, always go check out the channel and see what else is going on. Because um, I do all kinds of different crafts. So um, if you find me, you know, because of the quilting, that doesn't, you know, you might be interested in some of the other crafts too. So there we go. And see how that looked like this really interesting little triangle there? I like that. Okay. And this these tails are just, you know, when they're super long like this, I like to go ahead and trim them just to get them out of my way for sewing the next piece. Okay, so where's my corner? There's my corner. So, let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this wide piece. Oh, so sorry. So sorry. No seasickness. There we go. Okay. So, I'll add this big piece on. Um, I do use a mix of fabrics, but at the same time, they are all 100% washable in cold water. Um, I wash everything in cold water. I don't wash anything in hot water. So. I don't worry about mixing fabrics as long as they have the same washing instructions, washing needs. So that'll definitely be big enough. And now we're to our last corner. And let's see, go ahead and fold it just a little bit right there. Yep, and that marker did go through, so now I can kind of see it. Let's see. I don't have... Let's do... Yeah, let's grab one of these. 
I have these um, circles that are left over from um, doing a um, a different project and they're just I just I have so many of them so what I do is put it on here like so That's not gonna work because I need to know where to sew. So yeah, no, that's, I don't know how to do that right now. So I'm gonna get that going. Oh, I think my husband's home. I think he is. That's okay. I've got this one more piece to sew on. He can be quiet for two seconds while I finish that. Well, you're probably gonna hear him talking to the dogs and dropping stuff as he comes through the door. Uh, oh, my thread came unthreaded. Figures. Got one more little piece to try and do real quick. And my sewing machine comes unthreaded. There we go. my basting stitch and flip it over and now this one I got to be careful about because it's that little tiny triangle so I want to make sure that it's flipped the right direction and then run my stitch all the way around and then we'll be done with block 13 so thank you so much for hanging out with me and and coming with me on this this journey of building this blanket don't forget to check out the the links below if you're trying to find me elsewhere or um, and go check out the channel if you want to see what other things that I'm up to what other crafts I'm into um, I will have let's see I have some junk journals that are coming out right now but I don't know when this is gonna air so I don't know if they will have already been out <laughs> one of those because I'm, I'm gonna start putting out my sewing videos on Sundays regardless of when I record them so sewing Sundays there we go on our last side Double check it. Yep, went all the way to the corner, covered that corner, covered that edge nicely. So, thank you so much for joining me, and don't forget to like and subscribe to all that awesome stuff. Thank you so much.